to the adventure and put my on W four C Y Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... Jack. And Will. We're in Dead Poet Society. Nice. Yeah. So, right off the bat, you probably hear this a lot, how many times do people Google search you and get the wrong shit? Uh, I think every single time. A uh, more unique thing that happens is there's like a poetry following on Instagram, <laughs> and we get tagged in this community where they just, it's just verses. We get tagged in so many verses with backdrops and hashtag Dead Poet Society. Well, there you go. There's some lyric ideas right there. Yeah. <laughs> Our handle is We Are DPS. Sometimes we get Denver Public Schools or Detroit oh. Public Schools. We get a nice, a nice little showcase of what they're up to. Wow. They tag us. Well, you know what, what's funny about tagging on Instagram is sometimes you pull up stuff. And Instagram shows you shit to tag, but the picture's so small that you can't really tell if that's the right one. Yeah. And that probably happens to you, too. Yeah, that happens, yeah. Like, I was tagging somebody this morning, I'm like, that doesn't look like it's theirs. And I had to redo the whole post so I could get... That's what sucks. I had to get off and get back on to make sure I knew which one it was and yeah. redo the post all over again. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't be that difficult. Come on. Come on, Instagram. Make it so I can make sure I know it's the right one. <laughs> yeah, just recently they finally started letting you like press on the profile picture and it actually brings up a larger picture. And That's I, the problem. Yeah, right I've been there waiting too. for that for about ten years now because it's just like who is that? Who's I think that's the right person. And stop giving me suggestions for threads when I'm on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. Like you get that little like thing underneath the bio where it says what what how like what person you were in line to sign up for threads. It's like I don't care. Right? Like why do we need another Twitter? Or you, X. I know X, come on. Oh, that's a whole nother <laughs> story. <laughs> that's just stupid. I know why he did it though, or I think I know why he did it. Why do you do it? SpaceX. Oh, sure. And then he oh, has yeah. an X series Tesla. He also had um I think he had a company called X that didn't quite work out, that he wanted PayPal to be X, which was like the all-encompassing bank, social media, blah, 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 blah. So well, he, he's going to destroy Twitter, too. <laughs> he's working on it. So what, what, you, what you can't call it a tweet anymore. What do you call it? X and so, like, I don't know. If Xing you, something sounds like, I'm going to X it. It just doesn't it sound sounds right. Like, you know? Well, I was going to say, it sounds like you're blocking somebody, but now he's, he's talking about removing the block button. Yeah. That is yeah, the stupidest I'm, shit I ever heard. Like, free speech, okay? Like <laughs> free speech, okay? It doesn't mean I have to listen. Nobody said it's called free hearing. <laughs> Dude, I'm kind of excited for the chaos. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, I, you know, I don't participate. Our guitarist hands all the, handles all the Twitter stuff, and I never go on there. So I'm just like, I don't know. You kind of want to watch the, the, the pitchforks fly, dude. I know, right? I think you, I didn't like Twitter before, and now it's like, and I didn't go on there. I just have everything on Mac. Now it's like, I don't even want to go on there. It's like ridiculous. And he, he posts more than anybody. Yeah. Yeah, he's quite active on there. <laughs> oh, my God. So It never caught on for me. There you go. Well, at least they're not, when they're Googling you, they're not confusing you with him. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> so tell our listeners a little bit. You guys rock, but some of our listeners might not know how good you are. How would you describe your music? Not, not genre bullshit. I hate that shit. Because, yeah. like, why you have to be in one genre? But... Artists usually have a different opinion of what their music is. Like, even when it comes to genres, they're like, we're not alternative rock. We're not, well, who gave you that label? You know, it's like, 
somebody else did. Yeah. I'd say it's easiest to say that we're a rock band just because I love there are that. so many different flavors of ice cream. Like you can just, oh, this is mint chocolate chip, but all, now we threw in a fucking granola bar. I don't know, but at the end of the day, it's ice cream. You know, I know, right? It is. So we all have influences. Like I love R and B and fucking jazz and hip hop and stuff. And but at the foundation of what I grew up playing is rock, and that's kind of what we all bring to the table. We listen to a whole bunch of stuff. But when it comes together, it's like we're not trying to write a certain way. It's just what happens to come out is from all of our past experiences, our influences, I love that. and then it just turns into a song. That's why I'm so stoked about this album is because it doesn't follow one feeling. It just it kind of is all over the place. I love that you said that because I talk about this shit all the time, okay? First of all, there's so many ridiculous genres, micro-genres, sub-genres. It's getting, like, out of hand. Yeah. So, so much so that when I go and do all the festivals, I, what I used to do, I haven't been doing it lately, mm-hmm. I got to start it up again, is the band would make up their own genre because pretty much every genre only has one band in it because it's so fine-tuned. We are... Metalcore, post, hardcore, new wave, jazz infused rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Dude. I think we're entering the age of like the death of the genre, at least on the I listener's so. perspective. Man, I it's hope like, so. Everybody listens to everything now. I mean, why wouldn't you? I think that's you know, like a lot of people hate on streaming, but I, I think that's kind of the beauty of it is that you, you can now find everything that you like. For instance, okay, so. Uh, I rent a room from a family in uh, Huntington Beach, and uh, they just had their ceilings painted the other day. And the guy who came in to paint the ceilings, I was talking to him for a bit, and he found out I was a musician, was asking me about it. I asked him, what do you listen to? And he was like, I've been really into classical Thai music. And he's just this dude from, from Los Angeles, born and raised, and he just, he's like <laughs> really connecting with Thai music. That couldn't happen before streaming. No. You just, you don't have the access to it. And so. I love that perspective because there's good and bad. You know, there's times I've also said Lars was right. You know, we all thought he was an asshole, but he was right. Musicians are getting dicked over. Yeah. But then on the other hand, there's musicians that get more attention or get seen or heard that normally wouldn't. And like you said, certain types of music you get exposed to. Yeah. You know, and. Listen, I come from the day of gatekeepers, and I always thought it was stupid. So I love talking about this because nowadays, too, with this fine-tuning of genres, I find bands are all sounding the same. Like, I remember in the 80s, people used to say to me, oh, yeah, all all those metal bands sound the same. But they fucking didn't. Like, even the big four of thrash don't sound anything alike, you know? But nowadays, if you have somebody in a genre, it's like, I can't even tell them apart sometimes some, in some of the real micro genres yeah. because it's like this formula that they plug in. And it shouldn't I hate be that a, shit. Oh, it, like you don't know I hate that shit. It's not supposed to be a formula. No. You know, and being that I'm like a metalhead and a punk, those never had a formula and now they do. Yeah. Like, and it's like, oh my God. But. What I love is everybody has multiple influences. I do, you know, and there was transitions throughout my life. You know, I started here and then got exposed to this and that. So I think any musician is going to be influenced by multiple genres. Now you Mm -hmm. have a band. Each one has multiple genres. That blending of those influences is what gives you a unique sound to stand out above the rest. Whereas... The other way, you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that we um, kind of thrive in as a band is we are so ADHD about our music. We don't write the same song twice pretty much ever. You know, it's like this, the new stuff we have coming down the pipeline, like some of it's heavy, some of it's like almost straight up pop, some of it's, uh, you know, like alt and it's just we prefer albums that kind of garner your attention the entire time i love that and so the way you do that is you make music that fits every vibe and that's what the stuff we have coming down the pipeline is yeah just whatever's real you know people are going to connect with and it's funny because he's mentioned the gatekeepers like the gatekeepers don't even know what's going to blow up like uh who's that country kid who just 
the Oliver Anthony. Oliver Anthony. Yeah, you know the the, the anyway, he's, he's everywhere, and no one saw that coming. But now right. everyone's just trying to get their hands on him, you know right? What I mean? And look it's at Jelly Roll, like oh, okay. charting in every genre, like he charts yeah. in metal, rock, uh, hip hop, and country and pop. Yeah, I mean that says it all to me. Like that's the way it should be. Like yep. fuck that. Oh, you write what you feel. You can't get a, a charting in this genre because you're that genre. But we know who did that, and they're losing the power, and that is one of the benefits of streaming is the record labels. Yeah. Yep. They're the ones that did that. So now that you have artists that don't need to rely on them anymore, they're more like you where you can just play whatever you feel. And that's to me, that's authentic music. Yeah, it's the most important. I think, yeah, it's just... You write music that you feel, and as long as you're being true to your own emotions and that you actually like it, there's going to be somebody out there that likes it too and connects with exactly what you were feeling. And you know, I got to say, unpopular opinion, but Bring Me to Horizon is a perfect pioneers for what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are hating on them, but you know what? I heard Ali in an interview and he was like, why do I want to write the same song every time? Yeah, because you're not always in the same mood. You're no. not always going through the same experience you were on the last album. Life is evolving, and music so is you. an evolution. Yeah, and so are you. Yeah, that's, I was just going to add to that. Yeah, that was it. And you're evolving as your skills as a musician. How many of those gatekeepers, and I've been guilty of it myself, they have these bands that they love when they're like the garage band. And as soon as they start getting better at their craft, they, so their music changes because they're better at their craft. Yeah. And the old school people are hating on them for doing that. I look at Metallica as an example. James said recently, like, at the San Jose Shark Games, they play Seek and Destroy, but they play the original version from off of Kill em All. Mm -hmm. And he's like... I fucking hate that they played that version. I sucked. My voice was terrible. I didn't even know how to sing. Now, me, who's old school Metallica <laughs> fan, I love that old, raw James voice. Yeah. But I could see as an artist why you wouldn't want to stay a beginner. And that's yeah. the point. Like, why would you want to stay a beginner? You want to get better at your craft. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do. And, I, you know, we have a few songs that we can't wait to get out of our set list because we're just so over playing it. Because I know, we were right? just in a, we were completely different people at that point, you know? I Okay, so it was funny. At Aftershock one year, Blink-182 was headlining before the reunion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were leaving because they were all like, yeah, I dug this when I was 15, but it doesn't apply to me anymore. The listeners. Yeah. And that... That says it all right there of what you're saying. It's not only for the artist, but for the listener. Maybe you can't relate to what they're singing about anymore if you're still singing about that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And some of the things you take from, like, there's a lot of 80s bands here. Some of the things they were singing about just don't apply. In fact, there's a lot of 80s bands that would never, ever even get anywhere today with some of the things they were singing about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so. you know our next song is about Reagan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, the, listen. Today in 2023, with everything that's going on, if you sang a song about Reagan, it would be a liberal song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. No comment. Yeah, no comment. You know, right? It's like, oh my God! Back then, it's like, who could get any worse? And it's, yeah. it's like, even one of his kids said he'd be a Democrat today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, my man. God. It's gotten extreme out there. So I like your tat there because it looks like you're like somebody's going to fall into your black hole. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's, um, it's a black hole on a graph. I love it. Yeah, yeah man. I love it, too. It's my favorite tattoo. You like I that I figured out that's what it was? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> So tell us about the new album more so people can check it out and, and order it and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so we have um, Running in Circles coming out September 7th. It's the first single off of the um, thing that's coming next. Yeah, that's <laughs> and uh, the inevitable thing. 
and uh, I'm I'm excited for it. This new this new everything that's coming is uh, it's our favorite stuff that we've ever written, and we're really proud of it. Uh, see, I love hearing that because like. If it's not your favorite, how's it going to be anybody else's? Precisely. You know? And that, I think, goes along with what I was saying about growing as a musician. You know, you probably look back on your original music and, like, the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. All the time, dude. <laughs> right? Right? And then how many people want, want to hold on to that? You know, it's like, Oh, how come you're not doing this anymore? How come you? How can you take that song out of set list? I can't believe it. But like you said, I know if I was a musician, like some of these bands around for forty years, having to play this shit for forty years. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Near my studio, I'm friends with them. Vanilla Ice. Okay. Sick, dude. Coolest motherfucker. I gotta tell you the story too. Then, if you think that's sick, because. Yeah. At first, somebody came up to me many years ago, and they're like, hey, you, and I'm an 80s metalhead, so they're like, hey, you should interview Vanilla Ice, because he lives in the area. I'm like, why? <laughs> that was exactly what I said. But he goes, well, because, like, first of all, you should go check out, he's doing this event, downtown West Palm, check it out, and you'll see why. And I showed up. And there were like 50,000 people there. I'm like, holy fuck. Sick. And then I found out he had the number one single in, in London at the time. And then he has his DIY show. But then we do this event in my town where my studio is. And I was broadcasting live. So I met, And he, because he lives in town, he's so cool. He performs at this event every year for free. That's Cause awesome. Because his manager wanted to charge the town 10 grand. And he's like, he told his manager, nope. Uh, like this is my community i'm not going to charge my community so that alone i think he's cool as shit but yeah, then that's awesome what happened was is so this first event he's doing the deal i made is okay well i want to interview with him every time he came over during the day to do the interview to sit down his manager dragged him away somewhere and listen i do this a lot so i wasn't butt hurt by that because i'm used to it it happens that's the way it goes okay at the end of the night the manager walks up to me and he goes sorry he can't do the interview he's got another event to go to i watch him run across the amphitheater field and sit down in my chair shoo away his manager he goes i promised you an interview i'm giving you an interview that's awesome dude he didn't have to do that so that there makes him cool but it gets better Okay. Yeah, I love that. So then he invites me to broadcast live at his event in downtown West Palm, the, the big event. I come down there the first year, and he helps me unload my vehicle of all the radio shit, and I got Slipknot blasting. And he starts headbanging, and I, like, rolled my eyes at him. I'm like, really? He goes, no, man, you don't get it, dude. This is my jam. Like, I help them get signed. I'm so fucking sick of singing ice ice baby i wrote it when i was 16 years old <laughs> to the point of what we were talking about so that was cool but then okay the second year he uh has me there and this high up director at clear channel walks up to my booth before they were iheart and they were like just dipping into iheart and they're like you need to take your booth down they were playing you know Big Bad Wolf. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, wh why? I played stupid at first. Oh, because we're Clear Channel and uh, we pay for this event. We don't want you here. I'm like, well. Clear Channel. Fucking Clear Channel, right? dude. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rob, I, and then I say, well, Rob invited me here. We don't care. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I'm not your competition. I'm just some little station. You're clear child. And they're, and they're like, no, we're, because I'm internet radio. And they're like, no, we're iHeart. So, like, they were deeming me as their competition, which I'm sitting thinking in my head, I must be pretty fucking good if they think I'm the competition, okay? You know, yeah, I, a little ego it, boost. I, this is like 15 years ago, okay? So then... She was just not nice at all, so I stopped playing nice. And I'm like, listen, 
if Rob tells me to leave, I'll leave. I'm not leaving because you tell me to leave. And, oh, she had smoke coming out of her ears, man. She was so pissed. She went up on the stage while he's sound checking. Whatever she said to him, all I heard over the mic was, get the fuck off my stage and leave my fucking radio station alone. Right? That's the shit, dude. They were paying him. I wasn't paying him. I would have walked. If he said, hey, dude, do me a favor, no problem. Then he brings her upstairs to his club in downtown West Palm Beach into an office. Next thing you know, she comes down. She's apologizing to me. And then he moves me to his meet and greet area. He says, here's where you're going to broadcast. Fuck them. And then the next year, he like, like for that, I have respect for him for the rest of my life because yeah. he put his values before money and he didn't have to protect me at all. So then next year he comes up to me at the air event. Hey, you can come broadcast again. I kicked clear channel out of there. I don't, I don't put up with that corporate radio bullshit. I don't like how they treated you. And I was like, Holy fuck. He's the real deal. So like, yeah, that's awesome. The proof of that is you look at people, artists, you can assume whatever you want to assume, but we're all people. And at the end of the day, Whatever people may have thought of him, they're probably wrong because he's a badass dude that is totally loyal and totally cool and true to the art. And that's the only way you should be. The next part of the story, I get a phone call from Clear Channel. Hey, we've been listening to your station for a year. We're starting this new thing called iHeart Talk. It was the beginning of podcasting. We want to partner with you uh, and get your content on there, and we want you to beta test it. So, nice. moral of the story is stand up to Big Bad Wolf. They might end up your partner. Yeah, <laughs> right on, dude. So, I say that because I love what you're doing, being true to the art, you know, listening to you guys and what you're saying about your music. True artists, because none of it is rehearsed. It's just you're just being you and expressing yourself, and that's the only way an artist should be. It's the only thing that matters. So for that, I'm a fan, and everybody listening should be a fan, even if they don't like your music. Be a fucking fan or you can't listen to my show. (laughs) I fucking love you, dude. Thank you. (laughs) So tell everybody I reach out to you guys on socials, on the web, all that stuff, and how to buy merch, because that's the only way bands survive nowadays. And that's another thing I always tell listeners. They don't buy band merch. They don't listen to my show. Hey, so, uh, yeah, you can come see us on the road. Uh, our Instagram is WeAreDPS. Twitter is WeAreDPS. Um, and uh, if you want to buy merch, drop in the 7th with the single. It's going to be a whole new line, so go out and get it. WeAreDPS.com. WeAreDPS.com, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Find it. Love it. Any final words you want to leave the listeners with? No, man. That, that was an awesome story, and thank you so much for having us. Hey, thank you for being here at Rocklahoma, and thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Cool. Thank you, man. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.